Hey guys, in today's video I want to show you how to make some abstract growth shape in Houdini, so let's dive in. So I've created a new blank scene in Houdini and the first step like always is to add a new geometry node. So you can dive inside and now let's start by adding a first object so we can add a tube. So here you can press P to open the parameter of this node and here I will change some settings of my tube. So I will change the orientation to the Z axis and here I will increase the radius to 2 and I will increase 8 at 3 and I will increase the column number to 100. So now let's add the first clip node and here for the setting of this first clip node we can change the origin to minus 1.25 and we can change the direction to minus 1. So now let's add another clip node. So for the second clip node we can change the settings to 0.5 on the y axis for the origins. We can change the direction to minus 1 on the y axis and you can remove the x axis for the origin. So you can put 0 instead of 1. So now let's duplicate this clip number 2. So we can add another clip and here we can just change the origin and you can put the value at minus 0.5 and you can put the direction to 1. So now you can see we have this little geometry to create some points and then we can create a pop simulation to create some lines. So to do that let's add a scatter node to create some points on the geometry and here for the scatter node I will change the total count to 250 but of course you can always play with this value and I will decrease the relax iteration to 5. So now let's add an attribute wrongles and with this attribute wrongles we can create an attribute called something like i at uh, split points which is equal to it at pitchy num. So in that case, we have an attribute called uh, split points for each individual points. So we can use this attribute later to split different points for the pop simulation. So now let's add a copy and transform node. And for the copy and transform node, we can uh, keep the total number at two. In that case, we can split our points with the attributes that we have created just before called E at split points. So if you select the copy and transform node and if you go to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that we have multiple points with the same split point value. So you can see that we have the point zero and the point 250 with the value at zero for the split points attribute. Then we have the point number one and the point 251 with the split point value at one and so on. So in that case, we can split the points and create two different groups for the different forces in the pop simulations. So to do that, we can add an attribute wrongles. And with this attribute wrongles, we can create a new attribute called something like half, for example. And then we can split the points based on this half attribute. So first, let's start by creating a first variable called something like first, which is an integer value. And we can use a function called find attributes value. And here we can type zero for the first input. Let's type points, split point, which is the name of the attributes that we have created, split PTS. Then we can use the attribute E at split points. And we can type zero. So now let's create our alpha attribute. So let's type if at PT num is equal to our first variables then we can set the alpha attribute at the value zero. So let's open the curly brackets and we can type E at half, which is equal to zero. Now we can close the first curly brackets and then you can type else. And now we can set the value for the alpha attribute for the rest. So we can open the curly brackets one more time. And here we can type E at half is equal to one. So don't forget to close the curly bracket here at the end. So Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials, and that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So now we have an attribute half with the value at zero or one. So if we are selecting the attribute wrongles here and if we go to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that we have the value at zero for the first half and you can see that we have the value at one for the second half starting at the point number 250. So in that case, we can use this attribute to split uh, into different groups to create two different forces in the pop simulation. So to do that, let's add a split node. And here on the split node for the group, we can just type at half, which is equal to zero. And here we can type points. So now we have the first half on the left, so we can add a null and we can specify this is the first half. So you can just rename it first half and then you can duplicate the nulls and you can uh, plug it on the second output of the 
uh, of the split node and you can rename it second half. So now we can create two groups based on that. So let's add a group node. So here for this first group node, you can change the group type to points and here you can put everything in this group and you can call uh, the group something like up and here you can rename it here also if you want. So now you can duplicate the group node and you can plug it here. So now we can create a second group and for this one, we can call it down and you can rename the name of the group to down. So in that case, we have two groups and you can create a forces for the point going up and a forces for the point going down. So now let's add a merge node. So select these two groups and plug them to the merge. So now let's add another attribute wrangles. And for this one, we can create an attribute for each individual point. So let's type e at pt id, which is equal to e at pt num. So now we have an attribute and later we can use this attribute to create some lines based on the pop uh, simulations. So now let's add the pop net. So now you can dive inside the pop net and here it will be very easy. So here for the pop source, you can just select uh, for the emission type, you can select all points. In that case, it will emit from every point on the SOP. And now let's create some forces. So let's add the pop axis force. So you can plug that to the pre-solve input of the pop solver. So here you can target the groups. So you can just enable these options to target different groups. So in our case, we have created two groups on the SOP. So we have the group called up and we have a group called down. So let's select the first group, which is up. So here we can change some settings for the shape of the pop axis force. So let's change the directions. So instead of Y axis, we can put the direction on the Z axis and let's put the radius at four and let's put the eight at something like 3.2. So now let's go to the speed tab and here for the orbit speed, let's keep it at one. But of course, you can play with different value if you want. For the lift speed, you can put the value at one and, and for the suction speed, you can put the value at 0.1. So now we have our first forces for the group called up. So let's see the result of the simulation now. So you can see that we have the particles going up. So now let's duplicate this pop axis force and let's plug it here. And here for the second pop axis force, we can just change the group selection. So instead of up, we can select our group called down. And here we can go to the shape and we can reverse the axis direction to minus one. So now let's see the results. And you can see that we have the particles going in that way. So now let's add a pop drag. And here with the pop drag, we can play with different value. But in my case, I will put the value at 0.1. So now it's pretty much it for the pop simulation. It's very easy. So now you can go back to the sub level by clicking on the geometry icon here. So now let's create some line based on this particle simulation. So now we have only some points. So to do that, let's add an add. SOP. And here with the add, you can just select polygons. And here you can click on uh, by group. And here you can select an attribute. And the attribute we need to create the line is the PTID attribute that we have created before the pop simulations. Now you can see that we have some very nice line. So now we have multiple primitives because we have some points going up and some points going down. So to visualize that, you can just add an exploded view. And you can see that we have uh, the primitive going up and the primitive going down. So to avoid this problem, you can just add a fuse node. And here you can plug that here and you can maybe reduce the snap distance to something like this. So now you can just remove the exploded view. This is just for this. And now we have one and single primitive for each line. So let's add a polypass node. So now we can add a resample node, but maybe it can be better idea to put the resample node before the fuse. So let's add the resample. And here for the resample node, you can play with the value if you want. But I think in my case, I will keep the lens at the default value, which is 0.1. So now you can visualize the point number by clicking on this and you can see it's quite good at the value at 0.1. So now let's add a group node. Let's plug the line on the first input and let's add a box for the second input of the group. So here for the group type, you can change it from primitive points and here you can disable this and you can keep in bounding regions and here you can select the bounding object. So in that case, we can create a group based on this box. So here you can change the position of the box on the 3D space. So you can select the box, click on this little gizmo icon and here you can plug the box to maybe something like this and also here you can just change the size to select some points. And now you can see that we have created a group for these different points. So now let's create a mask based on this group. So let's add a node called mask along geometry. Ready to level up your Houdini pipeline? Get the Houdini script pack. Complete toolkit, seven powerful tools today, plus every future release with free updates. Save time on composition, geometry splitting, material creation, and more. YouTube subscribers get 50% off with code toolkit. Click the link in the description and transform your workflow today. So here you can visualize the mask by clicking on the information tab and you can visualize the mask attribute. So you can just enable this one. And here for the start points, you can select the group that we have created just before. So in my case, it's called group one. And here you can change the radius value and you can put the radius at something like 15. Of course, you can always place with this value if you want. And you can select these two dots and you can change the type to linear. 
So now let's create a new attribute. So let's use the mops shape fall off. You can use this one for the color. So it's just optional. So here to visualize the mops shape fall off, you can click on preview fall off and you can disable this. And now you can select the gizmo and you can put the mops shape fall off to maybe something like this. So now you can just increase the scale on the z-axis to maybe here. So in that case, we have the value from zero to one and you can use that for the color if needed. So now we can create a color based on the mops fall off attribute. So to do that, let's add a color node. And here on the color node, you can change the color type to ramp from attributes. So in that case, we can create a ramp from the mops fall off attributes. And here I will select my attribute, which is called mops fall off, and I will select the preset called plasma. But of course you can play with different color if you want. So now let's add a soft transform. And here with a soft transform, you can select the distance metric to attributes. And here for the attribute, you can select the mask attribute that we have created with the mask along geometry nodes. And here you can change the scale of the Z axis to 0.5. So now you can see that we have this result. So this is before and this is after. So now let's add a bend node. And this is where everything can be created with this bend node. And maybe we can go to the front view by pressing space three. And here you can define a region by clicking on this. And here you can define a region for the bend. So you can go for something like this. Let's press space one to go back to the 3D view. And here you can play with different value if you want, but let's put the value at something like 610. And you can see that you can get this kind of shape. So of course you can play with different value for the bend node, but this is the value I used in my case. So you can just check the capture origin and capture direction and also the capture length value if you want. But of course um, you can just play with different value for the capture regions. So now let's add a time shift node. And here for the time shift node, I will just freeze the animation at the frame one and 50. So you can right click on the frame, delete channels, and here you can replace the frame number by one and 50. And now you can see that we have this result. So now let's add a transform node. And here is a transform node, I will make some adjustments. So here on the translate, I will put the value at minus 1.8. I will put the value here at minus 6.31. Here on the Z axis, I will put the value at minus 9.8. 98. I will change the rotate to 45 degrees here, 4 degrees here, and 85 degrees here. And now I will change the scale on the x-axis to 2. I will change uh, the scale to the z-axis to 0.7. So now let's add an orient along curve node. So now let's add a sweep node. And here with the sweep node, you can just uh, change the surface shape to round tube to get some kind of triangle shapes. Here for the end cap, I will uh, put it to grid. In that case, I have a little grid at the end of the shape. And here I will increase the cap division to seven. And I will also increase the cap scale to two. And now you have this result and I will decrease the roundness to 0.5. So here for the sweep, I will increase the radius to 0.25. And now let's convert that to VDB. So let's add the VDB from polygons. Here for the resolution of the VDB, you can put the value at 0.015. Now you can add a VDB reshape node. For the VDB reshape, you can put the value at two on the delayed operations. Now let's add the VDB smooth SDF. And here for the VDB smooth SDF, you can put the operation to mean value, but of course you can play with different uh, settings here if you want, and you can increase the iteration to six. So now let's convert that back to polygons. So let's add a convert VDB node. And here you can convert it from volume to polygons. And now let's add an attribute transfer. So we can transfer the color from the sweep node to the VDBs. So let's plug that to the first input of the attribute transfer and let's plug the sweep to the second input of the attribute transfer. And here you can uh, select your maybe mops fall off and also color attributes. So now you can see the result of the color on the VDB. So let's add an attribute blur. Now you can blur the color attributes and also the mops fall off. So let's select the C attribute colors and also mops fall off. And here for the settings of the attribute blur, it's up to you, but you can increase the blurring iteration to let's say 500. And here you can put that to proximity and you can disable the pin border points. So now you can see that we have something very smooth. So let's add a normal node. Let's put the normals on points and let's select the face area. So now let's add a smooth node and you can smooth the positions and also the normal attributes. So here you can select the attribute positions and you can select the attribute normals. So now if you want, you can add that to file cache and here you can rename it something like row shape. And here you can just uh, put that in cache so you can click on save to disk. But for now, we don't have any animations on our growth. So here you can add uh, an animation before the sweep node. So to do that, we have our line here after the orient along curve. So to add some animation, you can add the curve node. So here you can plug that to the curve. And here you can just play with the first U and second U. So maybe the first U, you can keep it as it is. And you can just disable this. And you can enable the second U if you want. And you can add a keyframe to add some growth. So maybe you can start the growth from here. So let's go to the frame one. Let's add a keyframe. 
Alt and left click and you can go to the frame let's say 72 and you can put the value at 1 and you can add another keyframe Alt and left click and you can see that we have this growth animation so you can plug that to the sweep and see the results so you can see now we have this shape growing over time so this is the basic way otherwise you can just uh, download the free HDA that you can find on the descriptions and you can use this little HDA to create some randomness into the animation so you can plug that to the input here primitives and here you can plug that to the sweep and here for the random line you can just play with different settings if you want or maybe you can put this one to 0.1 this one to 0.1 and here you can just play with some settings for the first U and second U animations so maybe you can put that here so here you can play with keyframe on the first U animations so let's put the first value something like here so alt and left click and you can go to the frame 72 and you can put that to one and here you can see the results so here you can play with different settings for the randomness so Maybe you can just decrease it a bit. So now you can see it will uh, add some randomness to the length of the line. So you can play with different settings here for the minimum and maximum and same for the first and same for the second U. So here you can play with different settings to get uh, more or less randomness to the line. And you can also play with the seed if you want. So now we have some animation with very nice randomness to the different line. So now let's see the result of the sweep. And I think it's a bit more organic. Maybe you can decrease it to minus 0.1 or maybe minus 0.2 and you can see that we have even more randomness to the shapes. So you can download this little tool for free and if you want you can just type price if you want to help us to create some free tools. So that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye bye. That's it for today guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.